Hi guys, it's Nancy and I did a fairy hugs video using these stamp sets and I will link it at for the for you guys at the end if you missed it. But today I wanted to do a slimline aquatic scene using some of the other stamps that I got in that haul. So I do have a piece of watercolor paper. It is cut to three and a quarter by eight and a quarter so I can put it on a three and a half by eight and a half slimline card. And for my background, we're going to make it really easy and just um, spray with some distress sprays, distress oxide sprays. So I do have some just regular water in the sprayer. <coughs> Excuse me, my voice is going. And I'm going to bring in some blues and greens, just like I did with the pixie powders and the brush shows. And you can use <coughs> regular distress sprays, you can use the oxide sprays. You want to shake these up so that you get all that color moving around. And I do have a paintbrush and some paper towels off to the side as well. I want to go this way with it. I was going to go landscape, but I think I want to go this way with it. Okay, so same thing that we did before. I think I want to start with the ground first. So I'm going to use some of this mowed lawn for the green. Spray that at the bottom there. A darker green and some brown we're going to add in. So this is Rustic Wilderness. Oh yeah, that's really dark. Just put some of that in there. And a little bit of vintage photo. That's good. Just a little bit of that. I'm going to take my water and just kind of water that down a little bit. And just like we did before, move those colors, get them mixing. And we're going to dry it. So I'm going to pause the video while I dry that. Okay, so while that was drying, I went back in and just re-dipped into the ink that was there and got some more layered color on there. And so now we're going to clean up the green and we're going to start adding to the top portion, which will be our blues. So I'm going to clean this up. And I'm using a non-stick craft mat. You could use your glass mat, use whatever you have. It's just easier to clean up on the craft mat. All right, so now for the top part, we want to add our blues. I'm going to actually turn this upside down so that when I hold this, I can drip the blue ink down. I'm going to spray my cardstock just a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to add a couple of different blues. So we have Mermaid Lagoon, Peacock Feathers, Faded Jeans, and Blueprint Sketch. And again, use whatever you have. Oh, that's a lot of bright blue, but we like that. That is pretty. That was Mermaid Lagoon. That's a little too light. I don't know that I want to add too much of that. I'm going to add some of this blue in there. That's good. And some blueprint sketch. There we go. Okay, and again, we're going to just spray that and get them to mix a little. I like the water spots on there, and we're going to dry it. So you can see as it's drying, moving around, and then as it dries, I will go back in and re-dip into the mat and layer those colors in different places. So you'll see here in a second. So 
you can see that's pretty dry. But I have all this dark blue here and I want some of that dark blue up here. So I'm just going to take this and as you can see, just go in and dab into the different areas, the different colors. And it gives it a really organic look and we're going to dry it. pretty good I'm gonna add a little bit of water to here there's a spot right here that doesn't have any color I want to dab into that but I don't want it to be too dark so you can see I filled that in and again just keep layering the colors and keep drying and continue okay so I'm gonna set that aside to dry I don't want to waste all this blue uh, ink so I'm going to spray this down with some water. I'm going to grab an extra piece of watercolor cardstock that we can use later on. And I'm just going to go in there and pick up all of that extra ink colors because we can certainly make another underwater scene with all of that. And you can see that's just as pretty. And the same thing will dry in between and keep dipping in until we have all those colors soaked up. All right, so there you can see the second extra panel. We're gonna wipe all this up. We are done with the background. And now we have another panel we can use another day. So I'll just set that aside. Back to this panel, I wanna add some of those water droplets to the, do the water lifting. We're just gonna slightly pull on our Distress Sprayer handle, which is gonna give us kind of big blobs of water like that. I just want a couple of those. Let that sit for a second until it um, rehydrates the ink. It will start to lift. And then when you think enough has lifted, you're going to take your paper towel, lift that ink off, and then we have white spots on there, which I think adds to our underwater look theme. Pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to hit it with the heat tool one more time before we start stamping. Okay, so now we have our background pretty dry. We're gonna bring in the fairy hug stamps and start building our scene. I wanna start with this one, which is the uh, sunken ship. And that's gonna go right there, perfect. So, I think I will bring in my stamp positioner for this. I'm going to use my Tim Holtz stamp positioner. I'm going to switch the lid over so that it is on the clear side. You, of course, could use your Misty. Use whatever you have. And I just have a piece of sticky grid in there. And we're going to position this corner. My magnet on there. Put our stamp all the way at the bottom. Actually, we're gonna have to move it over a little. My mat's a little warped from heat embossing it, so we're gonna take that off. That's just a piece of sticky grid there. So we'll do it like this. Okay, and then we're going to put the sunken ship all the way at the bottom. Well, maybe we'll put it all the way at the bottom. Let's see here. Perfect. Okay, and we're going to stamp that in a really dark brown. So we're going to use some VersaFine Claire ink in Fallen Leaves. I did 
get a little ink on the edge of my stamping platform, the little lip there, so I'm going to clean that up. Okay. And again, you want to make sure your platform says clear so that you know you're on the clear stamp side. So I am missing this little spot there. So I'm just going to have to keep going back at it. Part of it is because this is watercolor paper. And the other part of it is because this is a clear photopolymer stamp. Sometimes you just got to give it a little bit more. A little bit more of a push. I just put the wrong color ink on there. Thank goodness I didn't stamp it again. Let's clean that off. Whoopsie. These things happen. One of the things you can do is put a little piece of stamping foam under there. Let's see if that helps. Let's see if that gives us a little bit better contact now that I have that little piece of foam under there. Okay, that actually looks pretty good. Pretty happy with that. So I'm going to clean my stamp and move on to the next element. And that's going to be... Seaweed we can do, but I want to add our little friend Raphael. Last time we used Oscar the octopus. Today we're using Raphael the tortoise, sea turtle. So we're going to put him real low here, like he's super close, kind of in the center. And I'm going to move that stamping foam up as well. And I'm going to put my magnet, my bar magnet underneath. There we go. Okay, so let's make Raphael, let's make him like he's going upward right here. And I'm going to stamp him in a dark green. We're going to use Shady Lane. actually stamped out pretty good the first time. I really don't need to stamp him again. So that's Raphael. You know, one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, we have some more of the what I'm making seaweed. This is called the Hanging Vines. 
and normally you would stamp it that way, but I'm gonna stamp it upwards. And we also have wild leaves. So we're going to turn this way. Oops, sorry, bumped the camera there. All right, so we're gonna turn that way. Bring our stamping foam back down a little bit here. I have just a couple pieces of paper here we can stamp on. lighter green. Actually no, let's try rainforest. Let's see how we do with that. pretty good. That was with the hanging vines. And we'll grab this wild leaves. This one's green oasis. It's kind of subtle. It's not as um, in your face like the other, like the vines are, but I think that's good because then it just gives you a little camouflage here for our turtle, for our little Raphael. Okay. That looks pretty good. That is pretty good. I'm very pleased with that. Now we have some smaller elements we can add in here. We did add these sea horses in with, we'll just add this, the little baby again, the little one. delight. Put him over here again, hiding, hiding again in the bushes. Great. We have a whale, but I don't know. I don't think that's going to look to scale if we put the whale in there. Maybe we'll save the whale for another day. I think we'll save the whale for another day. Let's see if we can put this starfish in here. Starfish and Monarch. Put that down here in the corner. There we go. And then as I always do, I'm just gonna 
incorporate some gel pens for some final finishes and we'll be done here. Let me clear my inks out of the way. Take my stamping foam out. That's pretty cool. Going with some green to color Raphael. Let's see if we can find a nice dark green. These are all very bright greens. That one looks pretty dark. All of, all of these green gel pens. I have like four colors. Five colors. Make that six colors. <laughs> they're all different though so that's okay all right this is the darkest one I like this one so we're gonna go in and we're going to just color in Raphael so that he's all green and this is a Sakura jelly roll metallic pen I just found that these really work for me for accenting. Um, of course, you can use color pencils, you can use markers, use what you have, but I just really like how these, um, these gel pens pop. And they, they write so nice on, on this, um, watercolor paper as well. I can go in with some of the darker ones and go in and act, um, accentuate the plants, the seaweeds, just following the veins of the plant. And it doesn't look like much, but when it dries, the sparkle and that metallic pops as well. And then you really get to see the definition in all of those lines and everything that you drew in. We have our little uh, seahorse down here. some tattered rips to the sails here. Again, add some more kind of seaweed coming up. It's just again, following the stamp that we had. We almost lost our little starfish under here. Got a nice purple. There we go. I did lose my little starfish. And then 
then for our turtle, I am going to add some green marker in there just to fill him in so he's not blue. Oops, that's too dark. There we go. This is just an alcohol marker, but you can use color pencils, you can use watercolor markers, you can use whatever you have. You can leave him the way he is. I just like to color him in so that he looks green and not blue. That looks pretty cool. Gnarly, dude. taking the brown and following the mast of the ship and some of the wooden areas and just to highlight some of those things and those are the little things that kind of make the card pop just by accentuating some of those a little bit you know it doesn't have to be perfect and then I would just stamp a sentiment at the top, put some clear sequins on there, some clear Uvo drops. Maybe you want to add a little bit of shimmer to the background for the water. Do some uh, air bubbles. always look fun and then that's it and then you're going to put it on your eight and a half by three and a half inch card base and you'll have a slim line underwater scene i'm going to do a little white around his eye a little bit oh that's not white that's black whoops white gel pen give him a little bit of reflection from swimming in the water I did lose my little starfish down here oh wow well. he's camouflaged you can't see him Draw some bubbles, some really simple bubbles. There we go. Really easy, simple underwater scene just by adding some distress sprays with watercolor paper and stamping with the fairy hug stamps. And again, I'll show you the ones that we used. We used Raphael the turtle. We use the sunken ship, which is 
stuck on 15 different acetate things here. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we have the sunken ship. We have Raphael the turtle. We have the plants, which are wild leaves and hanging vines. And then if you wanted to add a little bit more extras, we have the seahorses, which come in this little three pack here. And of course we have the mini starfish. You can pick all of these stamps up at Fairy Stamper. I will link it down below for you. Again, that is the Fairy Hugs stamps. If you have any questions, post them down below. I will link everything in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and keep on stamping. Bye-bye.